For this video, we are going to focus on making mandalas not by drawing them, but by using collage and some printmaking techniques. And those are going to end up being a lot less complicated than um, it might initially sound. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the background. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. This is a um, what I use as a stencil. Uh, it is something that's used to hold trim and I got it at the thrift store because um, they had a whole bunch and you know it's a thrift store 25 cents and they're gonna sell the whole thing. So you can see that I've used um, a lot of different products with this. This is you know spray paint there's spray ink, there's also paint on there from stenciling through with opaque opaque paint. The first thing that we're going to do is use it as a stencil with some spray um, acrylic paint that's been watered down. I put water and plain acrylic paint in this spray bottle. I actually got these recently at Michael's for one dollar each. They're by Art Minds, Art Minds, <laughs> and there it was in the soap making um, department. So there's one more place in case you don't have any um, Targets or CVS's that have travel sections that have the little bottles because sometimes they don't carry them. So it's nice that if you're going to go for a trip, you can get all the stuff at once. Okay, so I'm shaking it up really, really well. And I experimented a little bit. And um, at first I thought, oh, I'll just put a little bit. But then it got, it was a really, really light coating, which is fine. Um, I just didn't think it would show up very well on camera. So I've put more in there. And in any case, I would shake it up a whole bunch. Uh, before you use it. So if you do a, a gentle spray, you're going to get more dots and um, that's probably difficult to see through the stencil, but if you do firm quick sprays, first of all it covers more area and you can move it around, um, but you're going to get more fine mist. I kind of got a combination there too. So each bottle is going to be um, its own combination. So that's going to stay wet for a while. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to work around that and um, put a few color washes down. And again, I'm working on a slanted surface because it works better for my muscles. Um, and I keep better posture that way. So the wet paint is dripping down. If I did that with ink, it would do the same thing. And even if I were working on a flat surface, I might actually tilt my um, canvas up to make that happen because it it's cool. It looks fun. Um, this is artboard again. You can also do this in your art journal with plain watercolor paper, anything. Cardboard with a, a gesso coating or a paper coating, it, it would work. So I'm just going to get my brush damp, put down some paint. Just gonna dip it right in there. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and let that blend a little bit. Get some interesting variations that way. I don't really want the background to be super complicated. Just enough to make it um, pretty interesting, but not 
overly so, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm just smearing around and dabbing. And actually, just to make this dry, just for efficiency, I'm going to go ahead and um, blot this also. In other cases, I might um, speed up the drying or go off and do something while it dried on its own. But today, this is the way I'm doing it. Actually needing to protect my muscles and my posture today a bit extra. So I'm being a little bit more cautious. This is Dilutions paint and it's a little brighter than the other paints here but um, the orange for some reason is a little um, more muted than the others in, in this line. And that's um, squeezed orange. This is also by Ranger. You can get it at Michael's. You can get it on their website, on Ranger's website, on Michael's. So I'm just brushing on over top of that rose, the mixed rose and blue. And again, I'm just going to go back with this paper towel and this time I'm going to rub that flat. And we're going to get some texture from the paper towel. And now I'm going to use this um, Eco Craft paint. Oh, I think that's actually dried up. It is. Too bad. It goes really well with the papers I'm using later, but we will manage. So I showed those in the um, supplies just because I do knew that eventually I would pick some out. But the reason that it's dried out is because I've had this for quite a while. And uh, you know, I just have some of what's left. It's one of those things I bought a lot of while I was pregnant and then of course I had the baby and that means that um, I didn't get to use it as much as I thought I would. But now I'm coming back to it. You adjust. So again, just using the paper towel as a tool. I'm going to come in with just a little bit of water. Play around with that. So the yellows and pinks and oranges, they all play nicely together. They blend well. They're on the warm end of the spectrum. And then the pink and the blue mixed well because red and purple uh, or red and blue make purple. But the blue and the orange are opposite and they're not going to um, mix and stay clear and that's not something I'm interested in dealing with. So we are going to stop here for this part of the background because I'm going to keep it fairly simple and use some pattern paper when we do the 
collaged and stamped mon mandalas or printmaking mandalas afterwards. So see you in the next 